you're going to want to sever it. Um, now, a lot of has anyone heard of this document called the NR73 Determination of Residency Form? Okay, let me just explain to you what it is. If you go to Google and you type in NR73, it'll be the first hit because it's so popular. Um, basically what it is, is it's a document that the Canada Revenue Agency issues and if you can't figure out your residency status, you're allowed to fill it in and ask them. I don't recommend that you ask the government if you're a resident or not. Because, first of all, this is merely an opinion by the Canada Revenue Agency. It's not binding. So as though they use the word determination and it sounds like it, they're enforcing the fact that you're either a resident or non-resident, it actually doesn't mean anything when they write back to you. But it'll still scare you if they say, we think you're a resident. They usually think you're a resident because you filled the form out right. Or filled it out wrong. So that's usually the, the common mistake that I see people fill out the form wrong, send it in, and they get a letter back after having lived in Hong Kong for 10 years that says, we think you're a resident, and then you can't sleep for three days. So um, don't send it in, but definitely use it as a guide. It's a very good guide to looking at the different types of ties. Now when you look at ties, we not only look at the ties you have in Canada, but we look at the ties that you've maintained or that you've established here in Hong Kong. So if you've moved here recently or, or you've been here for a while, um, I always recommend to try to establish as many ties as you can. So a common one I recommend is getting a two-year gym membership because people don't get gym memberships to places that they're uh, visiting. So get the longest one you can, even if you're never going to use it. Um, you know, join a church, join a Canadian association, uh, join the hockey team of Hong Kong, uh, the Canadian, or if there is one. Um, so anything you can think of, there is one, I'm sure there is. There, there's one in Dubai, actually, as well. Um, but try to join anything that's going to make you more of a, considered a resident here, okay? Another thing, do not confuse residency with your American friends. Here's why. They are ta and they're jealous, so don't tell them I told you this, but they're taxable forever in the U.S. based on their citizenship or green card status. But Canada follows a British concept of taxation where we allow you to become a non-resident but still a legal resident of Canada. So if something goes wrong, you want to show back up in Canada, we'll take you, um, but you don't have to be a tax resident while you're living abroad. So please don't mix up the concepts. Now what happens if you are a non-resident? So if you're a non-resident, it's still important that you file something called a part-year departure return, otherwise known as um, a part-year resident return is another term for it. Now if you left, say, more than 10 years ago, don't bother. It's, you're already past the statute barred period and, and they would already probably have you in the system um, as a non-resident. At the end, if you're not sure and you want to find out, uh, come up and see me. I have a 1-800 number that you can call in Ottawa um, and they'll tell you whether they have you registered as a non-resident in the system. If it's before any time between now and say 10 years past, you're probably going to want to file it. If, if you didn't have some of the departure issues I'm going to talk about shortly, it's not complicated. Basically, is it's the regular Canadian return with the departure date section. So underneath the identification section on the left hand side it said did you arrive or depart Canada in the year? If so, in indicate your arrival date or your departure date. That's your formal declaration as a non-resident. So that's how you tell the Canada Revenue Agency you're not going to file anymore. We usually see people fill it out if they didn't in the past when they arrive back in the future. Because otherwise what happens is you've got all these years that you filed and then all of a sudden you disappeared and you weren't unemployed and so then you show up again and you have a tax return because the Canada Revenue Agency doesn't necessarily know you live in another country or work in another country or you reside abroad so it's important that you let them know with that departure return. Now if you've got issues relating to the departure return, here are some of them. So one concept is something called deemed dispositions that occur in a tax return or in a departure year. So what happens is if you own investments outside of registered plans, so non-RSP, non-pension investments, let's pretend you bought shares in um, Microsoft, for example, at a dollar at some point in the past while you were living in Canada. And the day that you left Canada, they were worth five dollars. Then Canada can tax you or does tax you on the four dollar accrued gain. It's, it's as if you sold the investments and rebought them back on the day you left. Why? Because Canada just wants to take their share of your accrued value in investments before you go. If that five dollars then turns into fifteen dollars, Canada doesn't care. Uh, it's not considered taxable in Canada. If it goes from five dollars down to a dollar, 
and you have a, a loss, let's say for example, we don't care about that as well either. The other thing is as a non-resident you can invest in Canada. People are afraid to go and buy stocks or continue to trade within their TD Waterhouse account or buy property. The Canada Revenue Agency incur encourages it. Um, one of the indicators to them wanting foreigners to invest in Canada is there was some new legislation passed this year where they no longer tax you on Canadian source interest um, income. So if you have a savings account in Canada or a GIC and you're earning 5% interest, there's no longer any withholding tax. So just to explain the concept of withholding tax, if you're a non-resident and in the past if you earned um, income from interest or dividends, which are passive investments, and you're in a non-treaty country, like all of you are, then there's a flat 25% withholding tax. And the bank would issue an NR4 slip, which is really a non-resident T-slip. Um, it's no longer the case. So technically, it was already legislated this year, but some of the banks were doing it and some weren't, and I couldn't figure out why. It's only happening this year. It was happening in 2008, but over the course of the year, I had the 25% has always been in place for many, many years. Um, but effective in 2008, it was no longer supposed to be there. But some banks were still applying it and some weren't. And we couldn't figure out why. Um, even the bank was, didn't know why. But now, um, near now that we're near the end of the year, they're starting to kick the rule in. So effective January 1st, 2009, you should not see any withholding tax on interest. So why is the Canada Revenue Agency doing, or why is the Canadian government doing this? Probably because they want people to continue and invest in Canada as non-residents, but suckers like me still have to pay tax. So. But I, I'm envious of you all. But So feel free to... Uh, invest in Canada in stocks, mutual funds, interest bearing investments, anything you like. It's not going to cause you to be seen as a tax resident. Um, principal residents, um, I'm not going to go through it in a lot of detail unless questions come up, but just be aware that if you're a non resident and you own uh, a property in Canada that was formerly your principal residence, you can claim the principal residence exemption for the years that you were a resident, but you can't for the years you weren't. Okay, and that's irrespective of whether it be it, it's it's vacant or it's being rented. You can't claim the principal residence exemption for those non-resident years. Okay. Um, so the principal residence exemption. You remember when you're in Canada and you lived in a home, you lived in it for ten years, and then you sold and moved into another one. Okay. Yep. So so the capital gains are not taxable. Um, if you're non-resident, well, there's there's two rules. One one is considered a if you had a pre principal residence and you started renting it, there's a deemed disposition. Um, there's two options. There's one is called the deemed disposition rule, which means that the property is considered deemed disposed as of your the date you started renting it, and then for the years that you're a non-resident, it's fully taxable. The other option is you take something called a 45-2 election, which allows you to prorate the gain, the the prorate the um, principal residence years, so the non-taxable years over the total years, and that amount would be non-taxable, and the remainder would be taxable. And it just depends on which is more favorable for you. So you just run the calculation to see which is best.